So I know what you're probably thinking. Hey, Argonbolt, don't you already have a mecha ser- Shh. Listen, that series is for going over mecha broadly. It's concepts and reviewing eventually some shows and so on. This ain't that. This is mechanical design, baby. Not mecha. Two things deeply related. Mecha is the play. Mechanical design, however, is the making of the lead role. This series is going to be the analysis of the craft, nay, the art, one very underappreciated, of mechanical design. All I'm going to assume with this series is that you like cool robots, and want to know maybe what goes into making the cool robots cool. So first off, it's time to get down to brass tacks and deal with what exactly is a mechanical designer. Now, like a lot of things, the meaning of this term is not the same in the East as it is in the West. In the West, mechanical design simply means the designer of machines. Cars, planes, also robots, but so on as well. In the East, of course, shows need these same fictional machines. But above them all on the Pantheon sits the great and mighty mechanical design. Designer. The role of the pivotal figure is to design and draw the mecha to create one of the most important aspects of the mecha show. It's a job that I would say is easily on my top five list of ideal positions in life for sure. Now, will I cover spaceships and cool machines as well? Probably in due time, including some western ones. But for now, I want to focus squarely in on the role of the mechanical designer in shaping one of the greatest aspects of mecha, that being the key mecha themselves. Now I'm sure you're thinking, how hard could it be to draw a cool robot? It's fucking hard, okay? To draw a good mecha, I mean, like a really sweet mecha, takes more than just copying some stale Gundam seed ugly color palette jumble of sharp edges together. Part of the reason I love and wanted to do this is because of something called Nexialism. Now what is that? How does it relate to Mecha? Simple. Nexialism is the use of multiple segments of many different studies to coalesce into a new solution or understanding. In essence, the artist's design of Mecha is essentially the same thing. Mecha involves a staggering overlap of applied fields to truly draw out its full potential. So obviously you initially have anatomy, as it's important to understand in any art form what exactly you are deviating from before you deviate there. As mecha are in essence an anthropomorph of the mechanical, or so on, the root then returns to humans and the way our bodies are built. Pectoral muscles, elbows, knees, abdominals, uh, rhomboids, anyway, how the shoulders are set, so on. You then layer on costume and design, as suits of armor, or powerful heroes, or machines of war, how do the uniforms that we humans wear themselves be reflected in those machines? The Kevlar flak jackets, for instance, of Patlaver, the regal knight armor and cape of Escaflone, uh, the whatever the fuck this is. Now as well, they are machine, but what is the nature of their machine? There are many great mechanical designer in-jokes, and one of the ones that I love is from the last episode of Giant Robo, where the damaged eye of Giant Robo reveals to be what appears to be some kind of V8 engine block. Another great example is the mechanical cutaways that show great detail in the pistons and rotary cuff blocks, etc. And of course, the always ominous special holes. Even just the machines themselves can change quite a bit. What are you pulling from? Jets? Tanks? Submarines? Battleships? All of them? Or maybe you are Ideon and you just love fire trucks. Now as well, stylistically you have architecture. What? An architecture? Yes, even though buildings are unmoving and static, don't be mistaken, a mecha exists within this stage of its world. The Big O's beautiful Art Deco metropolis is wondrously reflected in the form of the Big O. Likewise, look at Tokyo 3. It's a massive, sleek, neo-futurist metropolis, so naturally the Evangelions are likewise massive, sleek, neo-futurist to reflect this. As an opposing example, Diegard's form is abundantly and very purposefully out of place in the world because that's the point of the show. The scale as well also brings in aspects of landscape art, the way a titanic figure meshes amongst the buildings and terrain of alien planets, familiar cities, and foreign lands. How it is positioned, scaled, and framed by its world. Some of the machines are so titanic they rival mountains in size, yet their human form draws us to them so strongly. These are just a few of the broader aspects. In detail, everything from martial arts to heroic painting to many, many other factors can come in and influence so many details of mechanical design. Okay, so now you're probably saying, or if you are not, I'm moving on anyways, enough with that conceptual shit. How do I make the cool robot? Well, be patient. We will get there someday. But I want to end with... The principles of mechanical design according to me version 3.3. Okay, so these are what you can think of as guiding pieces for understanding and also creating a mecha. 
Note, I've changed this list a few times, uh, but this seems to be a good version to use for this video. There are nine, but don't worry, they break down into three groups. So, as follows, the principles are the first group, the compositional, color. I put it here first, but it's sometimes one of the things only really figured out later in a design. But this list is not in order to reflect that, it's here just as an important staple. Silhouette, or the simple shaping and form of the mecha, just the outline, nothing more. What does it say about the mecha? What does it communicate? Finally, lighting, shadows, highlights. How does the light emerge off the shape of the machine? The second group is the material. It's a very important one. How the mecha draws from the materials that make up our world. You might think, uh, but it's just metal, right? But I mean, even in your head, think about how many different versions of metal alone exist. Materiality. What is the dominant material of the mecha? What is it drawing from in its textures and colors? Detail. What are the detail it possesses? Detailing is very important. How spots of detail are zoomed into or used to break up and draw one's eye around a design? How are they used to express the mecha's form or to enhance it? Reference. What is the machine referencing? What is it drawing directly from our world to give off the impression of? The third and final group is the formal, or basically, what is the form of the mecha? What is its shape? Firstly, we have shaping. What shapes are present? Proportions are vital here. How is the mecha communicating its style of form with its shape? What areas are longer? What areas are shorter? What has been made bulky and what has been slimmed down? Waiting. Now this is a tough one, and it's also present in my principles of mecha animation list, but that's for another time. In essence, where is the emphasis positioned on the design? What holds and focuses the eye? We live in a world of gravity as well. When we see this machine, how do we imagine gravity moving through it? And finally, Posing, posing, posing. How does it pose? Is it cool? What does it do? How does it show off its form and shapes? So this was probably boring and you probably forgot one or two, right? So I'm gonna wrap up this video by applying all of them, that's right, all of them, to a popular mecha that you probably already know of. There it is, the RX-78-2, the original Gundamu. So let's get started as we go through the principles. Color. So obviously the color is bright, it's very strong. You can see it's all primaries, yellow, blue, and red. But notice as well how they are distributed. If you have the red, what I like to call the boat shoes area, that have a bit of color at the bottom to ground the figure, then you also, in case you did not notice, also have the red around the torso. Now red is a very powerful color, draws humans very, very strongly, then lead up into the blue of the chest. It's a very focused and concentrated chest. Silhouette. So the silhouette is neat. You can see generally the Gundam is actually very simple. It's a geometric humanoid form. It's largely quite streamlined, and outside of the V-fin does not betray the machine to any specific degree. Once especially you take the elements of the shield and gun away, if you put it next to the GM and get rid of the V-fin, you can see the shapes are almost identical. Now, probably for good reason for those that know why. Light. This is, uh, once again, a focusing in the chest area. The shadows on the white arms and legs leave, as I'm sure most of you will know with color theory knowledge, just gray or what you get when you add a black to white. On the chest though, the vibrant primaries still pop out very strongly. Materiality. So the materials of the Gundam are really space age. Very sleek white metal. You think of maybe aircraft aluminum or the fuselage of a rocket maybe. It's very sleek all over. Detail. Okay, so the details here are great. Really, there, there's only a few, but they are honestly some of the strongest parts of the design. You have the mechanical vents on the chest, the yellow waist panels, and of course the neck area that focus on the Gundam's head. Which I mean, it's a really fantastic face. It's sleek, it's simple, it has the Mempo face mask look. It's got a little bit of the framing of the V-fin base and the chin. But then you look closer and you have the red rimming around the gold yellow eyes. Really a continuation of the Gundam's whole design. Sleek, futuristic venting, samurai slash centurion helmet. Reference. I mean, I've already kind of given it away most of it. It's, it's a samurai, especially with the beam sabers and that classic look, but it's got a bit of the jets. It's also got this nice big knight shield. This thing is really a suit of combat armor from the future. Shaping. So there's lots of little human anatomy shapes popping up everywhere on the sky. You have the pectoral chest, the sloping of the neckline, that bit of kind of around the waist really reminds me of the way the ribcage slides over the torso organs and is wrapped in the abdominal muscles. With the beam sabers as well, we get this kind of continuation of where the shoulder blades should crest right up above the back. You'll notice this is where uh, wings are usually mounted on the human form. It's kind of got two aggressive shapes, making another V along with the V-fin. Really kind of saying, like, I'm ready, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm spread up towards the sky. Kind of a powerful stance. Waiting. 
So really with the weighting here, it's it's really quite oriented towards stability in a big way. You can see the larger lower legs and the wide, wide feet feel like a big, nice wide set of boots. Combined with the red I mentioned earlier, you have this nice triangle of stability up to the concentrated detail of the chest. Uh, the arms are far more evenly proportioned, you'll notice. It's really kind of concentrating up towards the head at all times. Posing. So this, I think, is, is really the killer part of the original Gundam design. It can pose like a frickin' monster. And you know why? You know why, you know, maybe every robot can't pose this way? It's because the Gundam's combination of where its colors and details are located mean that it's pretty much in any pose draws your eyes across up from the feet across the center of the torso over to you know the bright beam saber or a dark rifle or the bright red of the shield just a great design because like all of that really i mean it's very minimalist there isn't really a lot going on but what's present really focuses uh, for example if you look at the famous last shot it's really a perfect expression of this no head no left arm, no friggin' problem. The design once again draws up from the feet, through the chest, right up to the dark beam cannon, right up to that big beam shooting into the sky in a nice eye-catching pink. So yeah, in general, the RX-78 Gundam is fantastic. It is really a case in simplicity. A sleek future samurai knight whose strong but controlled uses of color and detail are very nicely balanced. It doesn't overwhelm you. It just waits to be focused into a really nice, dynamic, punchy pose. Even without the success and and maybe subsequent repetitions of this form and design, I think really would have been brought up again. It's a very strong minimalism of elements, and it makes it feel, in a way, almost practically timeless. Even after 40 years, it's kind of like Superman. It's just good.